I'm actually not looking for a relationship right now because I have to work on myself. And how old is your child? She's she's four months. I'm not looking for a relationship. Four months? Where's yeah, the she, father? Yeah. Huh? Come on, you're not looking for a relationship. You should be in a relationship right now. Four months old. That was a it was a it was, it was a one night. No, no, no. It actually wasn't. I just made it was just me. My my how do I say it? It was a poor de- decision that I made. What was but the I, number one red flag you ignored? Him being in the music industry. What does he do in the music industry? A rapper. How many children do you have total? Four. By how many men now? Three. <sighs> Listen. Because look I can look at your right? look at your media page. Look at this. What? Tell me, please. Look at this. You think you come off as something that a man? Look at this. Well, this yeah. is the one. See that? This is the one right here. Mm-hmm. The only one. Fashion designer. You don't look like you selling clothes. You look like you selling. I mean, a four month old after already having two baby daddies and you go and have another child. Listen, I get people come from all types of different backgrounds as far as not knowing what a stable household looks like. Some people didn't go with their mother. Some people didn't go with their father. Some people didn't go with either parent. I understand all of that. But at some point you step into adulthood and you have to start to take accountability and responsibility for your choices. And you cannot continue to believe that you can make the same horrible, bad decisions over and over again and expect different. And in this situation, her getting pregnant by a third guy after already being two baby daddies in is exactly that. Because I'm sure at the time, the very thing she's talking about as a red flag, him being a rapper, was the very thing that she was attracted to. And I'm sure in the past, it was the very same qualities that he possessed that she was attracted to, that her first two baby daddies possessed those very same things. So at some point, as a person, you have to look at yourself, you have to say, it's not them, it's literally me who is the problem in these situations, that I have to do better. I gotta make better choices. And I'm responsible for all of the chaos and negativity in my life. And until women like this actually do that, results will always end up being the same. We're her. living in the era of transactional dating. That's why. Well, men me. men realize they don't have to be your boyfriend no more. They don't have to be faithful anymore. They feed you well, good dinners, good trips, good gifts. That's all they want. Well, now. not for me. I want I need And school. that's why I'm nobody sorry. is trying to really love. date because why would you date when the woman don't really want that no more? N- My ne- if you put a girl right now to a test and ask her, what's more important to you? The big Chanel bag right now, Saloon in a new car and not paying a rent or love? How many of that 10 would fail and say love instead of that? A lot. I mean, transactional dating don't sound nothing more than just a nice, more politically correct way of saying prostitution. Because y'all tell me, if the expectation is that I'll give you something if you give me either gifts or money in return. What else would you call that? And now we're seeing some women who are choosing to exploit this in different ways. Whether it be some women choosing to do OnlyFans or some women who are IG models, the expectation is still the same. A transaction between them and men to get the very thing they want from a man to be able to get access to the very thing that those men are wanting from those women and now that's what you're seeing in dating are women who are taking those same core principles of an ig model or OnlyFans model and they're adopting them to dating and expecting that if they're going to give men their time their attention and and even access to their body is going to require some type of monetary some type of tangible return that they want but really the most important thing that you got to remember is as long as you're a man that possesses the things that a woman is looking for initially then None of what we're talking about even applies as far as being transactional because she'll just give it to you for free. And that's why being confident and comfortable in your own skin will always be more important than how much money you have or how much money you're willing to spend. And that's why I'm excited to have Teach Henley as the sponsor of today's video. Teach Henley has simplified the whole 
skincare routine process for men. They provide you with all of the products you need and nothing you don't. Seriously, I don't think everybody really understands quite yet just how much Teach Henley is a game changer when it comes to healthier skin and having you feeling more confident because of it. Now, I recommend you start with the level one system that comes with all the basics. Your daily face wash and exfoliating scrub, AM moisturizer with SPF 20, as well as PM moisturizer to keep your skin hydrated throughout the night. Let me not forget, they keep it super simple and made sure to keep it super simple for all of you guys out there because just in case you're not quite sure, they're gonna provide you with a very simple little follow instruction card. That way you know what to apply, when to apply, and how much to apply of all their products. It's not too late to start taking your skincare routine seriously. If you haven't, start today. This is something you don't wanna put off because prevention is key with helping you maintain healthy skin longer. And listen, your future self will thank you. And because Teach Hanley is a sponsor of this video, they're offering all my viewers an amazing offer. Just click the link down in the description of this video to get 40% off your first skincare system, plus a free gift. And if you choose to become a member, you also get 20% off for life. So guys, what are you waiting for? Don't wait any longer. Click the link down below in the description to start your skincare routine today. Making my husband a giant breakfast to get his reaction. I hope you brought your appetite. <laughs> no way. This is real? Yes. What do you mean? I would never hear cooking. Mmm. Oh, God, it's so good. I know your back was big, but I didn't think it was this big. <laughs> <laughs> Not for me. This is fake or something. Why'd you make it so huge? Because you're a big man who deserves a big breakfast. What in your right mind makes you think I'm gonna finish one of these? You sharing with me? No, I'm not hungry. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, so you get comfortable. I'm gonna get you some orange juice. Oh my god. No <laughs> way, bro. Ain't no way. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Babe, that's good. I'm gonna get diabetes. <laughs> Alright, here you go. You play all day. <laughs> ain't no way. Y'all ask women all the time why you ain't married. Mm. But people don't ask men that. They don't. They don't ask men that. You know, because, you know, they like to make women feel like they're not on the level of getting married. Anybody wanting to be with them. When a girl is dating a guy for six years, the family is asking her, why he ain't married you yet? But nobody's asking that boy, hey, why you ain't married her yet? What's your problem? Why the men in the family haven't come to him and say, hey, man, what's your issue? You going to marry her or not? Or are you going to make her for six, seven, eight years? Mm. Where the daddy's hey. at? Where the big brother's at? They step up to these men and say, you done had a kid with her? Y'all live together? Why won't you marry my sister, my cousin? What is up with you, man? So you just going to hoe around on her like that? You going you gonna to sleep, sleep with her but not actually make it official? You're not going to actually cover her for real? You gonna fake cover her? Because these men are not covering anybody. That's a responsible grown man. I mean, the real question is, are these women listening to the men in their family if they are telling them, don't have a baby by a man until he actually commits to you through more than just his words, but actually through his actions and marries you and makes you a wife. You want the dad and the other men in the family to step up after she's already made her choice. And if those men were direct to her correctly, why didn't she listen to them before making the choices that she was making? And now listen, while you will hope that if a man does get a woman pregnant and they're living together, they're doing all these things that are pretty much, you know, what a husband and wife would do, you would hope that eventually he does want to make her a wife. But <laughs> since you put the cart before the horse, she really doesn't have any control over that. Boom, respect. Boom. Boom. Because you need to understand, you're a statistic. When you go to your child's school and you're a you're single mom and you're black, you're a statistic. Some of you, your child has just started this new school. They don't know you from nowhere. Set the tone. Set a good impression. Take off the helmet of salvation. Remove the breastplate of righteousness and show up to your child's school looking decent. Today is the first day for some of you. Don't set the wrong tone. A lot of the time, the teacher will pick out who they can take the piss out of. And you know what? When you show up, where's my helmet of salvation? Ah, helmet, Nida. Hey, I've got rebuked it back to hell. Like, where, where? Sorry. When you show up to your child's school, 
first day of school and the teacher sees that you're wearing your helmet of salvation or more, things don't go better for you or your child. There's not, they already, they've already looked at you. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> He's behind me. They've already looked at you and judged people. Look at this poor, poor opinion. And your name is even villain of destiny. And you continue to be that. Shouldn't tell people to change for other people's opinions. You're exactly the type of person that would disgrace your child. Other people's opinions. It's other people's opinion. It's the opinion that matters. Some of you, you took that be yourself too far. Please stop being yourself. Yourself is horrible. Yourself needs to go in a closet in the dark and stay there. We don't want to see yourself. Be someone else. Some of you, you don't, don't be yourself. Be someone else. Because who yourself is, is a disgrace. This is not a thing of, oh, it's just someone's opinion. Stop doing this bullshit. Yeah, I'm, I swore on my life for once. Because it's, it's annoying. Saying rubbish, low-class, low-value statements like, oh, it's just other people's... It's your child's school. Your child's school is a government organization. You are the advocate and representative of your child. Showing up like this, you've let them know you're a clown. You're a clown. We don't have to listen to this clown. They couldn't be bothered to take off the last piece of their... My girlfriend told me she was pregnant, so I had arranged to move all her stuff out behind her back. I've known I wanted to be child free since my early teens. Since I'm not an only child, they'll still get grandchildren. When I was 20, I got a vasectomy. When I was 22, I met my girlfriend. I've been open about wanting to be child free from the very beginning. I remember telling her about my vasectomy, but to be honest, I think there was already alcohol involved, so I'm not sure if she remembers. We were dating for a year and a half, and when she moved in with me, I'm now 25, two weeks ago, I got home from work and my girlfriend was standing in the living room smiling. She showed me the positive pregnancy test. Thinking it was a TikTok prank, I played along. When she didn't reveal that it wasn't, I knew what had happened, but I continued playing along. That night, I got up at midnight and started sending emails. I took a week off of work and emailed my best friend the details. The whole week we followed Katie and on day three, she met up with her affair partner. We followed them to a motel and then Carl followed him to his home. The guy was married with kids. We devised a plan. I convinced Katie to go to her parents' house to tell them the good news last Saturday. While there, I gave my friends the keys to my home. At Katie's parents' house, we had lunch with the parents and siblings first and then Katie told them the good news. After a while, I got a call I had to take. It was my friends telling me they were done and ready. So I asked to make an announcement. I pulled Katie aside in front of everyone. I bet they thought I was going to propose. I started by telling how we met, how much she meant to me, and ended with, and that's why it hurt so much that you cheated on me and got pregnant by someone else. God, the room was silent. Katie looked shocked. She started telling me it, was, it wasn't funny. I said, I'm not joking. The moment you told me you were pregnant, I knew you cheated. I got a vasectomy five years ago, and I go to checkups every year. So if you're pregnant, you have to have cheated. At that moment, her phone rang. I told her to answer it. It was probably the affair partner's name. You know the real father of your baby. Probably wants to talk about you moving in. Not sure if it's his wife and kids are going to like that. My friends had loaded up everything of Katie's in a U-Haul and brought it to the affair partner's home. When they called me, they were in front of his home for the final part. They rang the doorbell and asked the affair partner where they could put her things. He was confused, and they handed him his wife a folder with pictures of him and Katie. And Carl said, since OP is kicking her out, she needs a place to stay. We're just here delivering her things. And since you don't want the woman who is pregnant with your child to stay in the street, we assumed you would take her in. Wait, what? A fair partner called Katie yelling that she ruined his life and he never wants to see her again. After hearing him scream over the phone, I said, oh, so his wife doesn't want his mistress there and their affair baby living there. So you'll have to stay here with your parents. With that, I walked away, leaving a crying Katie and her confused and angry family behind. I mean, listen, this is why you just really got to think and you shouldn't do things like this with someone who loves you and who has your trust.
Because when you break that level of trust with somebody, you really don't know how that's going to end up turning and what it's going to turn into. On the light end, it turns into someone who creates an elaborate plan to get their friends to move all your stuff out and embarrass you in front of your parents. But on the deep end, as we've seen stories in the past can go, it could have went even worse as far as things go. Anyway, guys, there's always questions, comments, thoughts, and your feedback. Go ahead and drop them down below. You know, I appreciate when you guys chime in. Don't forget, you can support the channel by hitting that like and that subscribe button. And as always, until next time.